In this video, we're exploring the new Tetsu Brewer that he launched together with Hario not too long ago. And currently, we have some challenges with it. We're working on it. As with all new brewers, it takes a bit of time to figure them out. And this is part one in us trying to figure out how to brew the best coffee using the new metal brewer from Tetsu. Welcome, my name is Patrick Rolf and this is Coffee with April. Now, we are always really interested in new brewing gadgets and quite a while ago, our dear friend Tetsu, uh, former World Brewers Cup champion from 2016, um, launched a new brewer together with Hario. And this is, at least as far as my knowledge, the second brewer he did. Uh, so he did first a version of a kind of a V60 and now he has a double wall metal filter, which is quite interesting. We've been testing it for a while now, and we want to, in this video, introduce our brewing approach with it. We're also uh, gonna have a short chat with Tetsu about the brewer himself, but when it comes to how we're actually brewing with it, first a few notes, it is a metal brewer. A metal brewer means you're gonna have quite a lot of sediment going through to the final cup, which is basically changing the tactility and the texture of the final cup. Now, those of you that followed us before knows that we're not super fans of metal brewers in general. However, it's obviously a really interesting point in the fact that you don't have to use paper filters and less waste is always a good thing, which is why we kind of wanted to have a look at the brewer a bit more closer. So when it comes to brewing, what we're doing here today is dosing 12 grams of coffee to 200 grams of water, a tiny bit less coffee than what we're used to. And the reason for that is because this brewer has a relatively slow flow rate. So basically we find the larger brews we do, we just end up with very, very long brew times. Now, this also translates to the grind size. Now on the standard Comandante, what we do is that we're actually ending up at 40 clicks. And yes, you heard me right, it was 40 clicks, which is quite coarse or very, very coarse. And the main reason for that is that when we do smaller grind sizes, we end up with brew times that are way above four minutes, sometimes up at five minutes. So we really wanna make sure that the brew time is a tiny bit faster, more or less. Now, naturally, we're gonna show you guys some TDS and some extraction calculations later on as well. Now, the pouring structure is quite easy. We're starting with a 100 gram pour. We let that sit for 40 seconds. And then I'm gonna do a continuous pour of 100 gram all the way up to 200 grams. And that's also because we find that continuous pours with this brewer helps us get a faster brew time. So that's something that we highly recommend, actually. So we're finishing our pour here at about one minute and five seconds. The water temperature sits at 94 degrees Celsius. We tried a few different temperatures and we haven't really found that there's a massive difference in terms of taste in this brewer or in terms of flow rate. It's quite consistent regardless. Um, we're gonna take a break. Well, that was a complete fail. Um, it doesn't happen often here at April, but this time it did. So basically what happened is something that we have uh, experienced quite a lot with this brewer. Like you just can't get all of the water to go through the coffee. It's next to impossible, even here on a grind side of 40. Um, and we think the reason for that is just that you need a lot more water in the filter to create enough pressure for that water to go through. So plan B, we've done some research and we come up with another recipe that we think is gonna be a lot better. And we're gonna test it right here for the first time, which is gonna be an interesting one. Now we're still using 12 grams of coffee, but we're grinding it on 25 clicks. And we're dosing it directly into the filter. The filter, I am not gonna put on the cup. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna hold it and what we're doing is we're actually gonna measure exclusively the beverage weight. 
So I'm just gonna pour as much water as possible into this filter continuously to make sure that I have a high average flow rate. And then when I get the estimated beverage weight that I'm looking for, for 12 grams of coffee, which in this case is 175 grams of liquid, then I'm just gonna take it off and be happy. And hopefully it's gonna be tasty. So let's see what we can come up with here. I'm gonna first, Hold that over the brewer, avoid not to spill, put the timer on, and literally just filling this with water. So what I'm doing here is I'm basically filling as much water as I can. And we don't necessarily recommend it to do it this way. Uh, Keep in mind that what you have to think about is that this metal, it is getting a bit warm. So make sure that your grip is touching so you're not actually touching the part where the water is, right? So now we have actually filled this brewer up to the very, very max. And we can see that the flow rate is still very, very slow. Most likely due to just fines and particles clogging up the holes in the bottom of the brewer, uh, which is obviously a challenge here, right? Still, it flues, it actually goes through faster than the other version we had here, right? So we do have a better flow rate. We're at roughly under two minutes and we're about 120 grams of liquid. So we're actually gonna get ourselves a, a cup of coffee in the end. It's a bit more labor intense than what we had in mind initially, but it does seem to work a bit better. So we're at 150 grams now at 228, so we're coming up at 175, which we're looking for and then we basically have ourselves a coffee. Now it goes without saying that the flow rate here is interesting and a bit different. And we found this again and again, and this is actually part of the argument behind the April Brewer when we did that. Whereas you have to consider roast degree when you choose which brewer you're using. And it could be as easy as the fact that this brewer is made by a Japanese roaster, slightly different roasting style, definitely roasting a bit darker than we do, um, and that is gonna have a massive impact on the flow rate. Now we're at 175, so I'm gonna put this off. And we have ourselves a cup of coffee. Now we'll take a short break, we we're gonna make some measurements, and then we're gonna jump straight back into telling you how this is actually tasting and come with some conclusions. One week later, and we're still trying to brew coffee with Tetsu's new double wall metal brewer that he's done in collaboration with Hario. Now, last week, what we were trying to do, we're basically trying different pouring techniques, different grind size, um, but we just couldn't get the water to flow through. So our brew time became very, very long. We tried going super coarse, which did speed up the brew time somewhat, but didn't give us enough strength to get a tasty cup of coffee. We tried different pouring structures, all of them which ended up clogging. Now, what we've done today is that we tried a bunch of more pouring structures, and we've done that after actually discussing this directly with Tetsu, because we had basically two ideas that we took with us from last week's brewing, and that was one that Perhaps this brewer is just more suitable for darker roasted coffees where the water goes through faster. And two, maybe we're just pouring completely wrong. But we found both when using the recommended recipe and also using our own various recipes that we just continue to have clogging in the later part of the brew. Part of the challenge here is that we've seen very clear correlations between when we're pouring in water in the brewer, there is a constant flow of coffee going out of the brewer, but the second we stop, it seems to clog up directly. Now, the indication here is what happens is that when we pour, and Tetsu is recommending 
basically doing center pours or doing more kind of specific pulse pouring. And whenever we pour, there's enough turbulence for the coffee to not clog up the bottom of the brewer and for coffee to go down. But the second we stop, all of the coffee goes down in the bottom of the brewer and then basically it clogs up. Now, this is a challenge because you want the water to go evenly through the coffee. Now, we even tried brewing today where we used a spoon to actually take it away take the coffee away from the holes in the bottom of the brewer. And naturally the water goes through much faster. But being a metal brewer, we end up with a bunch of sediment in the cup and a pretty dirty, not very tasty, well-structured cup of coffee. So we don't wanna do that either. So bottom line here with our experience is that we are having trouble getting a brew time, which is basically faster than five or six minutes. That's where we're ending up. And unfortunately then on various TDSs, the coffee isn't coming out very tasty. It's just not very clean. Now, our second theory was, okay, so this is a brewer more suitable for darker roasted coffee. So we tried our SP line here at April, which is darker than the normal April stuff, even though it's not that dark. And we basically figured out that there is a small, small difference as in the water goes through a bit faster, but we're still looking at brew times around five to six minutes without getting the results that we want to. So the conclusion for now is that we're struggling, we're working on it, we're having a very hard time to getting the water to go through the coffee, and we just don't end up with a full cup of coffee, and the coffee we're left with is just not very tasty. Now, next step here is I was gonna make another video. We're gonna talk to Tetsu again. Um, he's already been kind enough to send us some of his coffee because we wanna try his recipe using his coffee, basically brewing with him to make sure that we do everything we can um, to showcase this brewer at the full potential. Um, but clearly it's a brewer that is quite difficult to use for anyone that is inexperienced perhaps and if any of you out there actually already use this brewer, we would love to hear your thoughts on it. Have you the similar challenges that we have? Have you found out a better way to brew it than we are currently doing? What kind of roast style are you using when brewing with this brewer as well? Anything you can come up with would be really helpful and we're looking forward to basically bring you a part two of this video where we get Tets on board as well and make sure that we have explored every single aspect of the brewer for you guys. Now with that, we wanna thank you all for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, join our Patreon if you wanna have behind the scene content and enjoy your day, thank you. We wanna give a special thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. It's because of you that we are able to continue to make these videos. And we want you all to feel free to always come with suggestions and ideas on the content that you want to see uh, because we are doing this for you and because of you. Thank you from all of us here at April.